From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Exaro Resources this month officially launched Arnott Opco, the consortium through which the Arnott coal mine in Middleburg and Mpumalanga will be owned and managed by the mine's former employees. Tasneem Bulbulia tells us more. The former employees of the Arnott mine will have a 50% ownership of the mine and will participate in the structure of Arnott Opco through a trust in Innovators Resources. The balance of the mine is owned by coal mining company Wasco. Arnott Opco CEO Bontle Afani elaborates on the launch of Arnott Opco and provides some background. Uh, today is the launch of Arnott Opco, which is a company that is owned by the previous employees. The previous employees own 50% of the company, so today we're celebrating the official launch of the company. Uh, back in December 2015, the contract that existed between Exaro and Escom at the time had expired and there was no interest at the time from Escom to extend the contract. So that forced Exaro to, to close the mine. So this whole process resulted in the retrenchment of about 1,031 people. So it was throughout that process that a group of eight employees decided to, to embark on a journey to buy the mine and operate it themselves. So the company was formed by Innovators Resources, which was a group of eight employees who've initiated this whole transaction. So throughout the three and a half years, uh, Innovators Resources partnered with Wesco and also formed an employee trust where all the affected employees who were retrenched back in uh, 2015 formed part of the trust as direct beneficiaries to the trust. So all those four entities formed the company that we are launching today, which is Arnold Opco. So Arnold Opco, we envisage to reopen the mine, reproduce coal, and we're looking at ESCOM as one of our strategic clients that we will supply coal to. The ownership of a mine by former employees is a groundbreaker in the country's mining industry. Afane explains the significance. The significance is huge in the sense that uh, employees, ex-employees have direct ownership and control into the company. So it's not like the usual ESOPs or, or share schemes that you would see in other mining companies. This is direct ownership where the employees will benefit from the proceeds and it is in the best interest of the employees to make the transaction work. For the country as a whole, it helps with employment, given that we are going to re-employ the people who were retrenched back in, in 2015. And it's not only about employment, but we're also empowering them economically. There's also businesses around the communities that were affected by the whole closure process that had to close down their businesses. So those companies will reopen again, will give them opportunities to provide services to the mine. So in terms of the country as a whole, it's a great example we need to live by. It will not only create jobs, but it, it will also empower people and they will also actively participate in the economy of the country. Other news making headlines, Matlante says South Africa needs to create a capable state. Former President Halema Matlante has said that any efforts to improve social cohesion and obtain buy-in for social compacts are happening against a backdrop of crisis and a destabilizing state. One of the key elements that have been referred to here is that we need a capable state. We need a capable state. Now, as South Africans, uh, we, we, we agree that we hold many dialogues, many conferences, and, 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 and we keep on talking. We keep on talking. Now, one intellectual said to us that uh, actually uh, what we do when we are confronted by this uh, convergence of several problems, social inequality, wealth inequality, uh, violence, uh, drug abuse, uh, and, and all of these social problems. He says uh, we, we adopt the strategy of spray and pray. So, spray and pray means that uh, you, you want to solve all the problems all at once because you treat them all as priorities. Uh, what we should do 
is to identify, identify both problems and opportunities that are catalytic. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.